The thing that makes me love the gospel more, Jesus Christ came into the world and brought a message to make all nations one. All men one in Christ. As long as you stay out of Christ, you're not one. But he can make you one in him. And if a man obeys the gospel, he becomes one. And every brother in the church, they're all one in Christ. And that's a puzzle today. Somebody says it's Christians in all churches. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. If they are, then there's confusion in all churches. Yeah, just one way. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Then to let you know he meant what he said, no man cometh to the Father except by me. He meant what he said. No man, your papa, your mama, nobody else. Nobody coming to Christ only by him. Not John the Baptist. John the Baptist came into the world, done a good wife. But you know why I picture John the Baptist like this. John the Baptist is like a caboose. The caboose runs behind the train, and the train pulls the caboose. But the engineer is in the front. That's in the caboose. Well, John the Baptist was a caboose, but Jesus Christ come running the engine. And anybody fool with John, you're right in the caboose. That's all further you can get with John is in the caboose. But we want to get into where the head of the thing is. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, shed his blood on Calvary in order to make us all do what? Speak the same thing. And be no division among us. Not one a Baptist, one a Methodist, one a Presbyterian, one a Catholic. Well, Jesus, if that be true, just common sense will tell you we're right in a bundle of confusion. Neither one of them believes the other's right. What makes us right? The Word of God. Speak where the Bible speaks and be silent where you can't find speaking for it. The Bible teaches us that Jesus said many other signs. Truly did he in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are not written. They are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. Get the Bible out. I'm trying to get it out. I want to have my head on at least when I'm preaching. This is, this is all. And now I, I like to have it hit on, you know, and let you know what I'm talking about. It's written right in this book that many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of disciples and are not written in this book. Well, what do you do about that? Search the scriptures, he says, for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they that testify of me. If you want to know the way to heaven, go right to the guy. If you wanted to go, you know I can tell you right tonight how you can go all the way to San Francisco and never miss a single thing and ask nobody nothing. What do you do? Get your map. Get your map and go to San Francisco and worry nobody. Hit the highways, just follow the map. Here's the map to heaven. You don't have to get out and roll and foam at the mouth and, and pray all night and somebody beats you in the back. Why no? Get up and read the map. Man looks crazy down there trying to get something to eat up there on the pulpit. Here it is. Here it is. Get right up and read the Bible, search the scriptures, and learn the way to heaven. Learn it. Talk. Do you not know I, when I was in Africa... Many of the little African boys and men would come up and put their hands beside of mine. And one reason they did that, they didn't know where I come. They thought all black people come from Africa. But no, I told them I used to be over here. I said, I, I told them, I told them, you are my brother. Well, they stood down and looked at me and shook their heads and looked at one another. And put their hand and here come another. And, and after a while, I convinced them that we were brothers. We were brothers. They, the white missionaries over there couldn't convince them. But they got their hands beside mine and said, sure enough. I said, we're well, brothers. No, don't be scared of me. And you know, when I left there, they done given me a suit for the chief. I made me a chief. I'm chief of a tribe. When you look at me, you look at Chief Cable. That's what, that's what you are, I show you. Don't you worry about that. I'm a chief of a tribe in Africa. 
Got my suit hanging in a case now. Up it up at the school then, right? One white brother thought so much of it, he built a case and brought the thing in there. Said, now, Keeble, fill this thing with the things you brought back. And I got it loaded. Got it loaded. in the what band look at my suit. And I feel I've preached in it several times in some of these days when I hold a meeting. Yeah, I might preach in it. <laughs> you, you're going to have to learn who Brother Keeble is. He's a chief. And I'm so proud that I'm a chief of a tribe, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's the name of the tribe, because it's such a funny name, I never could pronounce it. <laughs> but anyway, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a chief of a tribe. And I want to say to you, while I was there, by one, one sermon one night, 45 came forward. 45 come running down the aisle. Now, they think they're crazy in, the, in Africa. They ain't got good sense. They got more sense in them than over there than you got in America. You can't get us to walk to it. Let's know and run. <laughs> we won't even walk. But they came running down the aisle. And one lady had two, a twin on each arm. And she's covered to confess Christ. Not a shoe on, barefooted, but honest, sincere. Plenty of sense. Sense enough to come to Christ. Little more than America has. They're not crazy. They understand it. And I want to say to you, my friends, the white missionaries over there, are doing work that we could, we will, we will never do. What are they doing? They're going over there, right down in the bushes with them Africans and those white the good. I heard you say your little girl want to be a missionary. Well, she might have Africa in mind. You don't know nothing about it, but she said that, she just made it. Yeah, and those white girls over there right out of Lipscomb College, bathing them little babies. And I said, I looked at her and said, I never would have thought I'd ever seen anything like that. And the mother laying right on that little baby was born in the world with no bed to lay on, a mud floor, dirt floor. But those missionaries don't feel too good to touch them, holding them and rocking them in their hands. I doubt any of you ladies think not there. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right, that's right. Why you know most of us have said, no, nah, that's true, I can do that. Why do you know they stoop right down and pick up their little babies and bathe them and everything, and the African lady don't even know how to bathe a child. Some of them never seen a bathtub. They all go down to the creek to bathe, women and men all in the creek bathing. They don't know no better. They are, they, that's the best they can do. When you worship in Christ and fall in Christ, you can go right down and become one of them. And not even ashamed of them. That is when you get the spirit of Christ in you. Amen. Not ashamed of them. Not your nose turned up at them. Amen. Like we Americans would do, white and colored. <coughs> I wonder about this, you know. And when I went over and saw these young ladies doing all of that, right out of Lipscomb, right out of Abilene Christian College, and saw them doing as as there must be power in the gospel. Nothing but the gospel make you do that. <coughs> it takes a gospel. It, it's all that selfishness out of it. That keeps you from thinking you are better than they are. And looking down on somebody. That's what the gospel does. Gospel makes you respect all men. All men. Regardless to color. Regardless to nationality. And make all races speak the same thing. And no division be among them. That's this book. My God, it's wonderful to put your hand on it. And now on the other hand... I'd like to say in preaching the gospel of Christ, what does it do, Brother Keeble? It drives sin out of you. Makes us all one. And God created Adam. He made man in his own image. What was it? Big lump of dirt stretched out there. Made him his own image. Then he stoops down and breathed something in him. And that dirt got up and walked. And Bill, if you don't believe you are dead, you just die. <laughs> you just die and you'll go back to where you came from. Is that right? 
I read in my Bible why Jesus came up one time and a man had been dead four days. The Bible says four days. And the girls met him and told him that Lazarus was dead. He said to them, he said, no, he's not dead. Oh, why? I'm the resurrection. And I'm the life. Show me why you laid him. Show me. Don't come telling me about his death. Well, they want him to understand what they meant by death. And they told him, he's stinking now. <laughs> Show him up dead when you stink. Is that right? That's right. That's right. He's stinking. Now somebody sitting out there said, that's what I hate about Keeble. He could use a better word than stink. Well, stink is a word to use because that's written. It's written. Ain't no, ain't no. You know what y'all want me to say? He's modified. <laughs> uh, you, you say it like the Bible says it, and a man can understand it. Is that right? right. Yes. Yeah, speak by the Bible. Speak. I like that word stink. He's stinking. Sure enough, dead. <laughs> Jesus walked up there to a stinking man and told that stinking man and called him by his name. Is that right? <laughs> laying down there, laying down there, and he called him by his name. Why did he call him by his name? Because if he hadn't called him by his name, everything in the cemetery would have got up. <laughs> Just as able to raise a thousand as he was one. That's the confidence I got in him. I got the faith, but he didn't want but one, and he calls it by his name. He don't want but one church. That's why he's got one name. He didn't raise the, he didn't die for the Baptist church because that ain't written. Methodist church, he didn't die for that. If you ain't either one, I'm not saying this to me criticize, but I want you to be informed correctly. He didn't build all these churches. If he did, then he ought not to come here because he built a lot of confusion. The Methodists and Baptists can't get along. They can't hold hands in a conference and association at the same time. You take out people right now, they can't all, all get organized and legislate. Right now, yeah, that's right. they can't get even started. I read the paper and laugh. Man is a terrible thing. A great big bunch of intelligent men sitting up at the Capitol and can't agree on nothing. <laughs> there they are. What's the matter? What's the matter? And they got the wrong kind of knowledge. Amen. Wrong kind. Amen. You don't mind. They'll be fighting up there before it's done with because it's getting hot. Getting hot every day. Well, what's the matter? They need Christ. Amen. Right today, they need a gospel summit priest up there. A real gospel and a preacher with a nerve to preach it. Amen. Then set them down. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's all the thing will bring us one and make us all respect one another is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. All speaking the same thing and no division among us. My friends, Jesus told Lazarus to come out of the grave and call him by his name. That he stood with his grave clothes. Jesus said to the one standing around, Loose him. Loose him. Take all them things off. Let him go. That's right. Thank you, Brother Phillips. Loose him and let him go. And that's all you need tonight. If you're in a church not in the Bible, you're dressed up in the wrong clothes. Well, what do you need? Loose him. Lay down that false doctrine. Lay down that church that's not written in the Bible. If I was in a church and you couldn't find its name in the Bible, I'd get out tonight. I'd get out tonight. I wouldn't wait in the morning. I'd hustle out. I don't want to die in nothing that's not written. Or you wouldn't wear your wife's name. Or your wife wouldn't wear your name. If it wasn't written, where's it written at? Right where you got married. You're not legally married if y'all's name ain't written somewhere. If he leave a million dollars, you couldn't get none of it if it's not in writing. It's got to be in writing. And you can't go to heaven if your name ain't on the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Jesus Christ speaking to the Corinthian church through the Apostle Paul says you're living epistles, living letters, what? Known and read of all men. Living letters. Every one of y'all sitting here tonight wrote a letter today. I don't know what you put in it. You might have cussed. If you do, it's in there. 
Everything we've done today will close up in writing. Living epistles known and read of all men. I said, I want to live right. I don't want to mislead anybody. I want to lead everybody I can to Christ. How are you going to lead them? Tell them to hear the gospel. What else are you going to tell them? Believe the gospel. What else are you going to repent of your sins? What else confess Christ? What else baptism? Well, why did you put baptism last? Because it puts you in Christ. Don't get in Christ without baptism. I never make a little of baptism because that's the thing that puts you in there. Buried with Christ by baptism. Into death, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, we rise to walk. Not the old life, a new life. Born again, regenerated, heir of God, and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Somebody said, I don't like people preaching. I knew it, that's the reason I'm preaching this way. <laughs> if you seek to please men, not the servant of Christ, y'all tell them where that's written, I ain't got time. But now, the thing of it is, friends, I haven't got time to hunt it up. Somebody said, well, people don't tell you where nothing is written. That reason I don't tell you, go home and read it and you'll run into it. One lady said to me not long ago, said, Brother Keeble, I went home and read after you, and I couldn't find my church in the Bible, and I'm out of it today. After you left, I was baptized. Wouldn't be baptized if I was still reading. I love her reading. Reading would stop you. Look for your church. If you were going to a clothing store, you wouldn't go in a hardware store looking for clothes. No, no. That is if you could read. Search the scriptures. And then you think you have eternal life. Why go into a church not in the Bible when the one that he wants you in is in writing? It's in writing. You have to read this very book and find it. Jesus Christ said, Upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against. Blood bought. Thou bought it hanging on the cross. Then somebody said, Well, what about the law? Didn't Moses... Didn't Moses preach the law? Yeah. But that same Moses said this. For you, the prophets of the Lord your God, raise up your brother in like unto me. Moses told all the Jews, him shall you hear. Yeah, you can't fool around here following Moses. Moses didn't have the gospel. A new law came in when Christ came. And he took away the first. Well, what was the first? The first was the law of Moses. And he established a new and living way. The church of the living God. Gospel of Jesus Christ. A new way. Somebody said, well, I thought more the Adventists don't know that the law has been changed. Smart men, too, been to college and had their brains expanded. They don't know the law. <laughs> they don't know that it's been... Jesus had to die. Shed his blood on Calvary, taste death, crown of thorns put around his head, cost a whole lot to change that name. Give us a new law, a new way. Now in my conclusion, I trust that there's somebody in this audience tonight willing to give up Moses' law, that old law, and take the new law given to us through Christ. And he had to die on the cross, bury it in the Joseph's new tomb, conquer hell, death, and the grave to bring this new way and establish it on this earth today. Without the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, you're yet in your sins. May God bless you tonight. Somebody ready, I hope. Somebody not ashamed. Somebody willing to bow. Say, Brother Keeble, I want to be baptized. I want to comply. Well, you hear the gospel, believe the gospel, repent of your sins, confess Christ, and baptism puts you into Christ, and you rise another man, a new creature, born again, regenerated, heir of God, and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. Is that enough? That's all. That's a plenty that makes a man over, makes him a new creature. And in my conclusion, if you will, tonight, the Spirit and the Bride says, Come. And let whosoever will come and take the water of life freely.